Welcome back to another Geometry Nodes tutorial in Blender. Today we'll be using Blender 5.0's new feature, the Volumes and Grids, to create this super cool blazing text effect. Let's dive into it. So first of all, let's get some text on the screen. Let's go into our Geometry Nodes workspace, and we'll click plus new. And we don't need the group input because we're going to use a string to curve instead. And we can Alt, Shift, left click that to connect it to the group output. And for the string, we'll just use fire for now. So if you go up into the viewport up here, you can see that it's not centered. So let's change the horizontal alignment to center. And also I like to spin it around instead of looking from the top down, I like to look to the front. So shift A to bring in a transform, spin that on the X axis 90 degrees, and we'll look at the front view. And now let's fill this in with a shift A fill curve. And there's our fire text. Right off the bat, I'm actually going to change the font. So you can click open font and browse your file system for a font that you like. All right, so now that I've got my font changed, what we need to do is we need to, we need to turn this into a 3D mesh. So we can bring in an extrude mesh here. So we need to make this text manifold. And right now, if you look at the back, when you extrude the mesh of text like this, it pulls the top faces forward, but it leaves a hole in the back. So what we need to do is we need to perform a mesh Boolean on this. So let's lift this extrude up here. And this fill curve is the flat text. So we just need to combine these two. So I'm gonna pull this mesh out here, I'm going to flip the faces, and then shift A to bring in a mesh Boolean. And we'll just throw these together to union them, like so. And so there's a problem, as you can see, a lot of the text disappears. So let's try changing the solver. We've got exact, and it looks like from the back and the front that this might be a manifold object now. And one way that we can test that is by applying this geometry. You can click apply and then tab into edit mode. And you can see that these faces, if we press three to go into face mode, highlight a face and grab that face, they are actually part of the mesh. So that confirms that this is an airtight mesh. So let's command Z all the way back to where we have our geometry node modifier again. And so now we're good to work with this mesh as a volume. So let's shift A to bring in a mesh to volume node. And that converts that 3D text into a volume. You can sort of see it there but we can play around with the voxel amount and we might change this frequently as we're designing this. So let's drag this out into a group input here. And that gives us access over here in the geometry nodes panel. For now, I'm going to bump it up to 128. And the voxel amount just increases the resolution of this volume. There's no change there from 128 to 256. So I'm just gonna leave it at 128 for now. All right, so when we create this volume, we can see that the density is set to one across the board. And it's going to be this density that we can manipulate to make it look like there's flames coming out of this volume. So let's just see what it looks like when we change the density. So new in Blender 5.0 is we now have access to the underlying data structure of these volumes. Those are the grids and we can get grids and we can access grids by the get named grid node. And we know that we have this density uh, grid in the volume. And so we can actually access that density like so. By default, this node has this remove checked. We don't want to remove the grid. We do want to change the values in the grid that come out of this grid output. So let's take a look at what that looks like using some noise to change the density of this fire. So let's take this grid output, bring it into a math node, and we'll multiply that by some noise values here. And if we plug that factor into the multiply, and then rewrite this into the stored name grid. This volume output comes here. This multiply result comes to the grid. And now this goes to the group output. And if we name this to density, you can see that the density varied slightly. Let's actually give it another multiply node here. And we'll crank this up to maybe 10. So that's so this will act as a gain just to intensify the density there. So you can't really see much difference in this grid. But if we change these values on the noise texture and maybe even the type of noise that's being generated, now you can see 
that the density is changing. And if we change this to 4D and move this W around, you can see how that really changes the density within this grid. Right now, the density looks kind of blobby. So we can manipulate the vector if we pull in a position node and we can do some vector math on here. And we'll take this position vector and let's let's stretch this out on the Y axis. So we want to multiply by one. Well, let's just multiply. Let's just multiply by one across the board and let's plug that into the vector. What does it look like when we start to stretch this out? That's not stretching. Oh, this needs to multiply. There we go. There's the stretch. OK, so there's the vectors are getting stretched. So maybe we'll just leave it at 0.3 for now. If we go to the front view, let's also while we're here, let's join in the original geometry, that original uh, text so that we can see that right here so that we can see that with this volume also. So we're starting to see some of the flames. Let's jump over and go into our shading tab and we'll go into the material preview and let's create a fire volume material. So to do that, we'll actually need to delete the principal BSDF, shift A to bring in a principal volume. And that goes to, this is really important, that goes to the volume input on the material output. Don't get it confused with the surface. This is a very different type of shader. So from here, we can bring in a volume info node here, and that gives us access to that density. And we can plug the density into the emission strength. And let's maybe turn off or turn on scene lights and scene world and shift A to bring in a math. And let's multiply that density. I think right now, like the density values are pretty little. So we could turn that up to third, uh, maybe 10. Let's leave that 10 for now. What's the emission color do? I'm not seeing any color right now. Oh, right, right. We need to go into geometry nodes and in the stored name grid line here, we need to set the material. So we'll set that to the fire volume and go back into shading. And now we start to see our color there. Okay, that's actually not too bad as is. You can see that this is kind of low res. It's kind of pixelated. And so you can adjust the, um, the resolution of the volume. If you go into the render tab, go down to volumes. Right now, by default, it's a uh, resolution of one to eight. You can increase that up to one to one and you can see that it gets much sharper. If I control Z to undo that. And one to one gets a lot cleaner. The higher these numbers go, the the more computation is going to take. So steps you can crank pretty high, but even there I can feel my computer kind of chug a bit. So I'm gonna leave it at 64. For now, for preview, I'm just gonna do one to two. I don't really notice the difference at one to four. One to eight is pretty pixelated. One to four is not too bad. And maybe at the same time, let's make another material here and we'll call this text. And we'll undo all this, bring back the principal BSDF, plug that into the surface and base color, I'll give it a bit of a orange tint. Emission, I might want to do, actually, let's copy this orange. So control or command C and paste that over the emission color. We'll give that strength 10. And that's set to text. So go back to geometry nodes and we'll shift D the set material, put it on this line up here, and then we'll change it to the text. And so now if we go to material preview, now we've got the white text. So we're, we're making pretty good progress here. Uh, what I like to do is go into the compositor, press N to get rid of that sidebar, press new and shift A to bring in glare. My computer really struggles with fog glow. So I'm going to use bloom high quality. And to see that in the viewport, we have to go to compositor always. And now we can see how strong that is. In fact, if we go into the world properties and turn this strength down to zero, Now we can see how strong that uh, glare is. So let's turn the size down a bit, maybe the strength down as well. Okay, so we can see how there's a bit of fall off from in the middle here. We have this brighter color and it falls off to a darker color, a darker orange. That's because the density is changing and changing that density is the key so that as the density changes, the shapes of these flames will change also. But before we drive the animation, let's go back into the fire volume and let's actually give this emission color a color ramp. So shift A to bring in a color ramp and we'll take that same density, plug that into the factor and then we'll plug that color into the emission color. First, I'm going to copy that orange. I like that orange. 
And let's paste that orange color up here. And we'll maybe do like a red, like a dark red here. And that doesn't look too bad. Let's bring that bloom. Ooh, I do not like the bloom. I'm going to go geometry nodes and I'm going to change this tint to be like a orange color as well. Okay, going back into shading, I might give this like another red stop. Maybe what we can do is also try going to the, uh, we're in the render properties, so let's go to color management. And we go down to the view and change this to aces or maybe aces 1.3. Ooh, that's kind of cool. We're starting to get, I, I like those colors a lot more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. But when we look at the front here, in perspective, I want these flames to come out a lot further. So let's go back into our geometry nodes. And we've got this, we've got this extrude mesh offset. If we change that, yeah, if we change that offset, that's gonna grow these flames. You can see by looking at the top, it's going to grow the size of these flames, so that might be okay. If we go into the camera, right, let's set up the camera. Um, selecting the camera in the outliner, press Alt-R, Alt-G, and then RX90, and then GZZ to pull that back, and GZ to pull it more to the center. Okay, so now we've got a camera set up. Now we can change this offset, and maybe let's actually drag this out to a group input as well. And we can access that offset uh, in the modifier properties right here. All right, well, let's start animating this flame to see how that looks. Um, we can drive the animation by, uh, there's a couple ways. We could use the W here. If we play with that here, you see how the flames shift around. But that's actually kind of different from, but moving the W is actually kind of different. It's a different motion than just shifting this Y vector around. So let's try adding an offset to this vector instead, instead of using the W. So if we add some vector, we'll just say for now, zero, nothing's going to happen. But let's bring in a scene time node here and we'll take this frame and we'll go down to our end frame down here and right click and copy as a new driver. And let's pull the frame out into a math node. We'll change that to divide and then we'll paste that driver in the bottom. So that just gives us a percentage of this animation. And so that'll let us say, okay, by the end of this animation, I want this offset to be 10 units. So it'll start at zero. Frame one, the animation is 0% done. So it'll be zero times 10. And by the end of the animation, it'll be 250 over 250. So it will be 100% of 10 units. And that will be the offset. And so if we combine this into an XYZ node here into the Y, and then add that offset. And if we press play, we can indeed see this fire changing. Our frame rate drops to, for me, it's five. It's pretty slow right now. It's really chugging along. That could be because of the voxel amount. We can try setting this to 64, maybe even 32. It doesn't change a whole lot. So I'm gonna leave that at 64 for now. The offset scale doesn't make a big difference either. So maybe let's try going back into the volumes render setting and we can do one to eight, 116. Wow, it's just really, really slow. Nothing's really changing for me. What about steps? No, that doesn't make a difference either. One thing you could do is you could go up here and turn on the, let's pause the animation. You can turn on the timings. And so you can see for every frame, it's taking 149 milliseconds to calculate. And this will, this will vary a bit which is why we get a huge frame drop. I think I'm even set to 24 frames per second. Let's change that to 30. So if we're doing 30 frames a second, one over 30 is 33 milliseconds is our target frame rate. So we're way over that, which is why our frames drop like crazy here. I don't see any big timings. The mesh to volume right here actually is pretty bad. 10 milliseconds. Oh, the mesh Boolean. That's what's taking up all the time. Okay, maybe we can try baking this animation then. This might make a difference. The only problem is anywhere downstream that we make an adjustment, we're gonna have to rebake it, but let's just try it. What about now? Oh, there you go. Now it's baked, we get a nice 30 frames per second. So that looks a lot better as far as a frame rate goes, but um, I don't like the shape of this flame. And unfortunately, any changes I make here, 
I think we have to rebake. I could be wrong because this is actually affecting it. Let's just try um Oh yeah, let's add some distortion. That's looking a lot better. Getting some interesting shapes there. When you view it, when you view the animation in the viewport, um, it's kind of ghosty, like it's kind of blurry, but each frame after it's rendered should have better definition. In fact, now that's baked, let's go to uh, one to one. Does that make a difference? Yeah, it does. It makes a difference in the viewport. Good. I'm going to go to the uh, shading here and I'm going to change this text. I have to crank this up to like 30. That's pretty cool. 100? I might blow it out too much. Definitely looks like it's burning a lot hotter, so I like that. Let's go back to geometry nodes. Now we've got to adjust maybe the strength of that glare. This is looking pretty good. All right, let's get ready to render this. Let's go into the render tab here and we'll turn on ray tracing. And I might go into um, back into color management, turn on curves, expand that out. And maybe I'll take try taking some blue out. All right, I added a little touch here before I go in to render. I added a sunbeam. I duplicated the glare node and I just wanted to make this really subtle. You can kind of, you can see the shape of the text better with it. It just reinforces the text that's in this fire. And so I like that a lot. So I'm going to keep that. And we also need to go to the output tab here and we'll change this to a video with the encoding being MPEG-4, H.264. I'm going to set it to high quality. And that should be it. I think everything is good. We'll go into render and render the animation. All right, there you go. So that's it for today's tutorial. Thank you for watching to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe to see more awesome Blender tutorials in the future. And since Geometry Nodes is clearly your thing, make sure you click this other video popping up right now to keep learning some other cool stuff. And I'll see you next time.